Hello, this is Esan. Welcome to lab number one. The topic for today is motor skill acquisition. So the title of the lab actually explains what this lab is all about. It is basically how would you teach yourself a new motor skill, not any other skill, but motor skill. How does motor skill vary from any other skills? Well, the idea is it has to be a voluntary limb movement. So there are two criteria. Then it also has a lot to do with a certain goal that you want to reach. And this skill has to be acquired. So it's not something that you have built in. It is something that you learn through practice and experience. For most of us, learning a new skill would not make much difference because we almost we think we almost do it all the time. However, this becomes vital if you think about a rehabilitation case where a stroke patient has undergone some kind of a stroke. Of course, he's a stroke patient, so he went through stroke. But what I mean is and he became paralyzed on some us uh, so he became paralyzed maybe some section of his body he cannot control anymore now you would like to make this person learn some basic skills again from scratch so you will understand that you need to understand how people learn new skills in order to able to help this person learn it so in this lab, we are going to talk about different motor skill classification techniques that has already been explained in the online lecture video. And if you remember that it talks about three different continua, one was open to close, the other one being continuous to discrete, being ser uh, having serial in the middle, and from cross to fine. And so in order to perform this lab efficiently you need to have a prior understanding of all these three different types of classification standards that would mean that you need to know the definition of all of them and at the same time understand the intrinsic differences that these have among themselves to be able to better understand this lab. So you might wonder why is all this classification necessary? So well, classifying motor skills according to some systems would in inherently simplify your discussion about the skill. It would also facilitate analysis in the sense that you can compare different skills within the same category and use some knowledge of one skills and see whether that translates into the other to get a better picture of the skill that you are talking about or the skill that you want to analyze. Moreover, it can be used in rehabilitation centers, PT schools, and some other cases as well. Furthermore, coaches and therapists can use such classification systems to characterize motor skills, which would allow them to perform accurate task analysis so what is task analysis mean in this standard task analysis here would mean breaking down of the motor skill into its component pieces so that you can manipulate all this small small segments which will lead uh, to an increase of performance while you perform the skill which is a motor skill, I again emphasize. So, as I said, through this breakdown into component movements, you can target different components and uh, help them improve, which will lead to an complete overall performance upgrade. So, in this lab, first what you have to do is create groups of four to five people and select a skilled motor behavior that none of you are familiar with and then then answer the questions that I have 
or we have outlined in this in the lab handout so just to give you an example say for instance I have my own group and I'm the only member as opposed to having four other members or three other members and I decide to learn a little about golf because I don't know how to play it so the first thing that I would have to answer is whether golfing or golf is a skill motor behavior and check with the online lecture to see whether it meets the four criteria explained in the definition or which characterizes a motor skill so the question is whether my selected motor skill behavior which is golf is a motor skill according to the definition provided in the lecture according to the definition in the lecture we said a skilled movement which has to be motor must meet the following criteria. One, it has to have a goal. Two, it has to be voluntary as opposed to a reflex movement. Number three would be it has to be acquired through experience and practice. Number four, which makes it different from any other skill, is it has to have voluntary limb movement. Now, in the golf example, you can inherently or intuitively understand that it is a skilled motor behavior. However, when you reply or when you answer this question, number one, you have to be formal, scientific, and brief. At the same time, you need to explain your answer in a way which is just not one sentence that golf is a skilled behavior. You have to explain why based on the definition and the four criteria. So one of my reply to this would be golf is a skilled motor behavior and it ha because it has the specific goal of clubbing the golf ball in the into the hole through a combination of precisely performing a series of complex limb movement while following a certain guidelines or while following certain guidelines moreover golf skill needs to be acquired and it only improves through practice and experience so this is why I think golf or learning how to play golf is a skilled motor behavior because it satisfies all the definition and I could show it if you look into the definition that I uh, or look into my answer you will see I've used a sentence where I used combination of precisely performing a series of complex limb movement you should be aware that the series of complex limb movement does not necessarily imply that it is a serial task what I meant was you have to make logical movements starting from raising your club swinging it and hoping that the swing will hit the golf ball and it shoots off to the direction where you intended it to go it does not imply a classification standard just to remove the ambiguity that I have created in the definition now let us move on to the second question where we have to justify or characterize well not characterize but classify this golf playing of go like not playing of golf golfing uh, to see they belong to which continua let's first look into the idea of whether golf is a discrete continuous or serial which is the first segment of question number two I personally think golf mainly involves the act of voluntarily swinging the club in a continuous fashion as opposed to discrete 
so it is continuous. Moreover, it suits some of the criteria because this swimming, swinging motion needs to be uniform and it has an arbitrary start and a stop point. So what do I mean by arbitrary? What I mean is in an arbitrary, in the sense of, in the definition, I mean, if you think about the definition of arbitrary, it means you can start from anywhere. Well, you just can't start from anywhere, but uh, you can start from, you can have the club raised on top of your head in order to make a long shot or in order to make a short distance shot, you would don't need so much power that you need to raise your club high and high up and then make the swing. You can start, uh, the so the initial position of the club can be positioned arbitrarily and depending on your momentum, it might end up in different places. However, you can also might come up with the logic that it can be discrete because first you need to raise your club high over, over your head or position your club in, into a, uh, to, a, to, a, to a certain initial position then make the swing which hits the ball and you complete the thing so you can break it down into discrete task as well however if you think about it continuous is a better choice so sometimes you need to make this kind of decisions which one suits and you can understand depending on how you form this answer there is no fixed standard well there is a fixed standard but this is something that you will learn as you practice and learn about different motor skills the second segment of question number two talks about whether golf is a open or a closed motor skill behavior. So what you need to do is think about this and if you think golfing is mostly closed in nature as there are not much environmental vari variables that would affect the outcome of a normal game or a normal swing so mostly whatever decisions you make while you swing would result in the movement uh, or the yeah the movement of the ball if i have to put it that way um, uh, so you can understand that it mostly depends on your choice of movement and has very little to do with other things however say for instance if the weather is extremely windy or is drizzling or if we consider the various stress that you experience while you're playing a tournament in such case your uh, swings might vary so this motor skill might also be considered open given the context that you are in so again, you see, it depends on the context. However, it is still considered in general to be closed in nature. The third segment of question number two talks about whether golf is a cross as compared to a fine movement. Well, this answer is not so straightforward as well. If a golfer is trying to make a long distance shot, he would require gross motor skills, which would require the person to actuate large musculatures, which will definitely lead to a loss of precision. However, when making a short distance shot, the golfer would require to use fine movements, which would Im involve finger and wrist dexterity. So you can understand again that this answers varies and you need to show your logic why would you consider this to be cross as opposed to fine and you also need to give ideas from other perspectives to show contradiction and come up with a logical solution at the end.
which will give a more robust answer to your question uh, to this question considering your selected motor skill behavior whatever that might be the third question uh, requires you to do a task analysis to decompose your skill behavior into three subcomponent skills where this component skills should be designed to provide a practice that would eventually aid in the overall performance increase of the skilled motor behavior in question now so your idea uh, the idea is that you will break down your selected motor skill behavior into three component skills which are the most important according to your thought and create a practice schedule which arranges uh, you to practice this component skills in a logical sequence uh, which will help the person learning Uh, to be a little more efficient in that skill and so you need to justify the merits of the sequence that you have selected and how you would create a practice schedule in my case I'm talking about golf and I have no idea how to play this game and I would like to learn so according to my understanding the things that I would need to know is I need to know how to make a balance while I play this game so when I stand in order to hit a golf ball I need to know how to get a feeling of the balance while I make the swing after that I also need to have good hand-eye coordination while making basic basic swinging maneuvers or moves and third I would say that now that I'm done with the balance issue and the, I'm good at hand-eye coordination while making fundamental moves, I would learn. I would need to learn how to make short and long distance sh shots. So you can see I've created a sequence. Uh, in a try to be, I, I've tried to be logical, um, and which are basically small fragments of the entire motor skill that I'm trying to learn, which is golfing. So all of these individual skills, balancing, hand-eye coordination, short and long distance, making, learning to make short and long distance shots, eventually as a whole will improve my standards, not my standards, my performance. So this is the sequence, how I am going to train myself. And so maybe the first week I am going to learn how to do balancing second week when I'm done with that or the next two weeks after the first I will do a lot of practice to have a better understanding of hand-eye coordination and the fourth and the fifth and the continuing weeks I would learn uh, to do short and long distance shots so if you think about it why did I select this way so let's make this thing formal so now I'm going to explain why I chose this although I have given you an informal way I've like I've informally introduced all these things however I have been formal while I've, what I've written here in in the statement that I've made in this slide so the formal explanation would be stance posture and balance are very important to the production of stabilized and consistent club motion therefore short practices to balance to learn how to balance while doing the stance and at the same time making basic shots or dummy swings uh, will actually help me get a feeling about the balance La later once balance is achieved and I have a good feel about the exact motion of the club swing the next logical step would be to develop hand-eye coordination this is fundamental in developing perfect club swings 
for long and short distance shots. Uh, now with a developed and acquired sense of balance in conjunction with a decent hand-eye coordination, the next logical step would be to learn long and short distance shots. So now you would see that I've formalized the explanation why I have selected uh, this three individual uh, component tasks whereas my big picture is to learn how to golf and you can see that while selecting this task these are these also create a logical sequence uh, into uh, which leads to the way I am going to practice for the next five or forever so this is what you will have to do as well to iterate again I assume that you have already know the definition of motor skill acquisition uh, from lecture and you also have a basic understanding of uh, the classification standards and their definitions and their differences so the lab is about selecting creating a group selecting a motor skill and explain all the answers in a formal way at the same time well formal in this here means you have to use scientific uh, terms and have to be precise and brief uh, at the same time be logical in your explanation to get a decent grade I hope to give everyone 10 out of 10 uh, I'm certain my other TA colleague would want to do the same so hope to see you guys in class and yeah that's it take care bye